Hey everybody, yeah, Curious here. Welcome back to the Long Dark. So I just walked in the door. I have a quiet, empty household here. I'm uh, temporarily working day shift for these next two days. I'm uh, taking some training over at Opata, which is Ohio Peace Officers Training Academy, and um, just doing a, a class on evidence room management. So anyway, I spent the day talking about uh, different ways to package up evidence, acceptable ways for the lab to receive evidence, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I came home and I decided, yeah, I'm supposed to go and brainstorm three ways that we can improve our agency's evidence uh, room. But I was like, you know what? I need to get another video out to my to my faithful and wonderful viewers, which is you. So thank you so much for watching. All right, here we go. I Oh, look at this. I forgot. I left some meat there overnight, mainly because I almost got eaten by a wolf out here. I think it was a wolf, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I came in here and I slept for an hour, and then there was a wolf in the area. And I have to wonder if he thought, he started smelling me, started coming this way, and then uh, interpreted some of this as a decoy, because he was within ping range. My understanding is that's the way, it's, they, that's the way it works. If you drop meat when the wolf is not near you, like, honing in on you, then you're okay. But if he's already started to ping you, uh, and you drop the meat, he treats it like a decoy. So there's a wolf out there. Thought I heard something. I'm tripping out here, man. I'm tripping I'm out. Not sure I can carry let's, much more. let's get back here. And uh I'll just chop it up outside. You know, I'm not too too concerned. Let's try to do this real quick here. Um Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> uh, like a freaking roulette wheel. Okay, there we go. Or the slots, right? It's like the slots. I got three knives, yeah, I win. What do I get? A bag of bear meat. Woohoo. Alright. All right, so there we go. Now I'm carrying all that stinky, stinky meat. And I know the back... Oh, I think I just dropped some socks. I did. And I think I had those on, but now they're off of me, so I need to put them back on. And, well, it's, well, it's starting to get a little nippy out there. Better throw this back on. There we go. All right. Let's see if I can... We're going to keep an eye out for that wolf again. He might have started back this way again. It's hard to say. I should probably have my rifle out. Just play it safe. I didn't need to do a reload here. I'm down four rounds. I would say that this is going to be a pretty boring episode um, in the fact that I want to do a lot of maintenance. I want to get all this meat cut up, cook it up. Uh, but really what I need first before I can do all that cooking, I desperately need some more wood. So we're going to have to go on a little wood scavenger hunt. And I'm going to also uh, heal up my uh, clothing. So let's take a look here. My condition needs to be upped a little bit before I go wandering around for wood so i think the smart move is to go over here to the barn and uh just or to my snow shelter and just repair my my clothes uh and and, and just recover keep uh, calories on board that sort of thing so there we go all right let's do this 28 minutes at least we're uh spending time outdoors right let's drop this real quick all right take a quick look for the wolf if we've attracted one of them I'm like a really well-armed mirror cat out here, man. Oh, yeah. See, these wolves are getting a little close. I have to wonder if I pick Too up heavy. this bag. See, he's coming at me. He's immediately coming at me. Yep, yep, yep. He is, he is. I'm going to run over here, and I'm going to go ahead and harvest it real quick. Now, they will pause. They won't continue moving as I'm harvesting. It's just a glitch in the game. It's Once you start doing an action like this, they will not continue. I don't think. Oh, no. The snow's still coming down. But, uh, take a quick peek. I'm just curious. I'm curious where this wolf is now. I'm curious. Did he think that's a decoy? Yeah, you see, he's closer. He's closer. Is he going to continue, or is he going to back off now? I think he's backing away. I think he's backing away. But he was coming at me. Yeah, they were getting a little, a little close for comfort there. So, I think we're okay now. We got the meat out here, so it'll stay... Pretty good condition for quite a while since it's out here in the snow. And these wolves aren't going to be attracted to it. It's just just one of those things. Um, even though in real life, they would be all... This stuff would all be just gone. I just have a pack of wolves out here <laughs> devouring it all night long. 
if uh, if I really did this in real life. But then again, if it was real life, I'd bag this stuff up and I'd throw it up into a tree, you know? I'd, I'd have it hanging from a tree uh, somewhere where the wolves and the animals couldn't get it. Um, so I'd, I'd do something like that. Or I'd uh, uh, take one of these containers here and I'd pack it full of uh, the meat and it would be out, you know, somewhere like out here on this porch where it should be actually freezing cold. Um, but it's not. It's 72 degrees, even with the door open. So there, there are ways. I mean, I don't feel bad about taking advantage of that because there's certain other things that I would do in real life that I can't take advantage of. So it sort of evens itself out, if you know what I mean. All right, so let's get back inside here and take a look at the clothing. Real quick, just, uh, oh, let's dump this outside. Let's get that outside. I'm going to have to leave something behind. We got a lot of cooking to do, man. I think we're going to get our cooking skill up to five, but we do need more, more wood first, shockingly. So let's, uh... Drop this stinky stuff here. There we go. Wonderful. Okay. Well, our bear, it's what's for dinner, right? Yeah. Alright, so let's take a look. I guess I could just sit in here. I don't need to go inside the house, actually. We got six pieces of cloth. Um, there's curtains and stuff we could go in there and tear up if we needed to. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to need any cloth to maintain our snow shelter, just sticks. That's 79. What did I say? I said, uh, let's organize by condition. That needs to definitely be repaired. Let's get started on that. We'll go into our little snow shelter and do that. And it's about midday. Not quite midday, but really close. Take a look at our snow shelter, see how much we need to, re to repair it. Uh, one stick still. Uh, so we're okay. 93%. I'll take it. Let's get inside. Use it. I don't know if you can get attacked while you're inside your snow shelter. I imagine you can. Uh, never really tested it. I've only made one, and I just kind of hung out in it as an experiment. And uh, never got around to that. So I'm not going to test it if I can avoid it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you guys can go do your own testing <laughs> with your own with your own lives out there. But uh, what do I need? Sewing kit. Ah, oh, I know where I can get one of those. I've got a bunch of them in the house. Let's run inside here real quick. Grab one out of the doodad's uh, closet. There we go. Gosh, it feels good getting right back here into the into the long dark. After a long, boring day in class. Man, huh. it took... It literally... We had 27 people in the class. And we went around the room and told uh, everybody, you know, who we are, what departments we work for, and um, our experience in evidence, or slash the evidence room. And mine was basically like, well, I was asked to uh, uh, go to the class. I didn't make it in last last year. And uh, this year, uh, one of my supervisors was like, the best way to learn evidence is just get back, get in there. Get knee, you get your knees, uh, get about knee deep in the evidence and start doing an inventory. And I told the supervisor, I'm like, you're out of your mind if you think I want to touch it. Go into that evidence room and touch any of that evidence without uh, a formal class. Because <laughs> the most libelous... Uh, place in the entire department is the evidence room and the first thing they say in, in class was evidence room the place where you're most, li most likely to be sued and most likely to go to prison so anyway uh, yeah that's why I refuse to go in there without formal training I think it just kind of makes sense not just from my standpoint but from the standpoint of evidence involving cases of people that are dependent on my department the citizens out there probably don't want somebody in there that doesn't have formal class formal training so I told him there was no way I was going to do that. Man, you're not going to make me do it either. So anyway, I got into this class, and uh, I have limited my experience there. So my, my introduction was pretty short, but it took two hours, man, to get through the introductions with everybody. I was like, come on, people. <laughs> Jesus. We, we really don't want to hear about your entire life. It It's not. It, just, man, come on. Keep it, uh, keep it pithy, right? <sighs> Did I grab a... I grabbed a rifle clean kit. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked saying what I was saying. And I grabbed the wrong thing. I apologize. I didn't. My The prototype wasn't working, man. It was. I was not hearing you guys yell at the screen properly. I, you know. I got two ears and one mouth. And sometimes I need to shut my mouth and listen to you guys a little bit better. So let's throw one of these back in here. We'll throw that one down there. And yeah, where's it? There we go. Sewing kit. That's what I needed. Okay, I got it. I got it finally. I'm a little, a little thick in the head sometimes. Oh man, 
tell you, that class will do it to you. And then the next part of the class was we basically had lunch because it was two hours and that was lunch. So went into London, Ohio and had a little pizza at a, at a restaurant and then uh, came back around 1230. And then uh, we went up and we all picked a number off of the off the whiteboard in the front of class. And then we went to the next room and there was a bunch of different pieces of evidence, fake evidence, like simulated evidence. Uh, and you went to the number that you had. So I had a, like a blue polo shirt with blood on it, like not wet, but like sort of dry blood, uh, a blood stain on it. And, uh, was supposed to be used by an unknown suspect during a robbery at a bank. So they, they basically like whatever you have package it up the way you would. So I packaged it up and then we talked about each individual bag that we did. We went around the class and did that again. And then we went home. That was it. Introductions bagged up one piece of evidence talked about the way we sealed it up and the way we labeled it and then went home. I was like, wow, that was a waste of a day right there. But Hey, that's why I'm so glad to be here now. Oh, okay. Talking to you guys is just so cathartic. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys putting it up, putting up with it. But, uh, man, I got to go back tomorrow. <laughs> I got to go do the whole thing all over again tomorrow. Tomorrow we're supposed to, um, uh, we're supposed to be uh, talking about three three areas that we think uh, our individual policies or departments could uh, improve. Like think three things that we would need to change. I'm like we haven't even learned anything about property room at this point. You're basically you're talking about evidence collection, which isn't even really property room management. I mean, there, you can work in the property room and never go out into the field and collect a piece of evidence. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm like I don't know. I don't know what I ha I don't know yet. So. Why don't you guys teach me a little bit about the actual property room? I hope they get around to that eventually, because there's tomorrow's the last day. They better get on it, like how how to uh, how to uh, write up a good affidavit or how to write up a good subpoena to you know to uh, to have it destroyed or what what needs to be said to the prosecutor or the judge to have evidence uh, submitted for disposal. Um, what what criteria needs to be done for this type of evidence? What type of uh, uh, Auditing uh, and accountability uh, needs to be done for that type of evidence. I mean, those are the things that we need to be covering, not how to bag up a, ba a shirt that you get from the scene. Okay, I'm done. All right. All right, well, we're going to skip that one for now because that requires a little bit of... Uh, uh, actually, these are all pretty darn, darn good, actually. They didn't turn out too bad because uh, that requires just uh, some leather. I have to go, I think, downstairs to get that. Um, I could tear these up. I might tear these up since I have these. Can I do this with cloth? I need I need a rabbit pelt and cured guts to repair those. Okay, that's a bit different. Um, if I tear these up, I can fix my boots. But there are snow boots in Coastal that I can still get. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, shred these. I don't need to be carrying them everywhere. We can always get some later. They won't be that hard to find. De la vie. Alright, now don't screw up the repairs on this one, right? Because I just tore that up just for the cured leather. Let's repair these boots. And we should get 30%, which is perfect. That's almost exactly perfect. Get maximum uh, repair out of it. Nice. Okay, good. We were successful. That's great. 85% chances. I did have high hopes for that. All right. Uh, yeah, let's repair this thing up. Probably get 23. Yeah, 23%. Two cloth. I could probably let it go down to 70 and get the extra 7%. Hmm. I don't know. Got a lot of sewing kits. But we are going for a whole year. But I am going to find a lot more sewing kits at the same time. I say we just repair it, you know. We have the we have the resources and we will find more. So let's just do it. Let's just repair it. Ah, right, we failed. That was two pieces of, of cloth just wasted right there. Okay. And then, um, I'm going to cook outside if I can. Well, I, you know, and I guess if it gets windy, I can take a torch from here and go inside if I'm forced inside. Um, I just don't want to lose, like, and I have to, I'll have to do, like, one log at a time. Because I don't want to put five logs on the, uh, into the fire pit here. And then have a huge blizzard come through and just completely snuff that out within like 15 minutes. Which it will do. Um, so that would be a waste of like five logs. But I still need to go find some logs at the same time too. Maybe I should just rest. I think maybe I should just rest. 
I'm getting a little too uh, excited. I need to worry about my condition at the moment. I mean, I did just get attacked by a bear. I don't know why I'm trying to just do everything. Sort of like those the old school women where they have the baby and they'd like be out in the field the next day plowing fields, right? That's the way I'm treating Will right now. You just got attacked by a... It was just a medium-sized bear. I don't know what your problem is. Okay, so there we go. We got that uh, fixed up. Uh, what's our... We're at 54 degrees warmth bonus of 14 windproof. Good armor. Yeah, my sprint sucks, but that's okay. It kind of feels like it's getting a little bit weathery right now. So, starting to get a little late. Alright, let's head on back in here. I might just stay down here for the night. Just for giggles. Let's see here. Oh, uh, you know, this plus a bear roll would be just the ultimate, right? For outdoor, uh, for outdoor uh, adventuring. Okay, let's see what else I can do here. Yeah, let's go ahead and repair that one. Yeah, we need more cloth. Okay, maybe not. Let's see if I... I don't think I have any more cured rabbit pelts. Actually, I'm sure I don't. Peeking. I'm a little nervous. Those wolves make me a little nervous. Maybe I'll do a quick little run up here. See if I can find uh, some down limbs. I don't know. Maybe we'll get lucky. How much do we weigh? That's the other thing. Six. Okay. We'll be alright. And what's our fatigue level? And do we have uh, tea? Or no? Yeah, we got coffee in case we need it. Okay, good. I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute. This is day shift accurate right here versus midnight shift accurate. I just feel like I have a little bit more advent or a little more energy and uh Which is good. Unfortunately, I can just record one episode because by the time I get done recording this, everybody, the household's going to be on their way home. So, I'm, I'm going to try to get this pushed out to you guys. It's 4.20 p.m. on the 26th, so February 26th. I'm going to try to get this uh, video rendered and pushed out to you guys tonight, hopefully by like 9 or 10 p.m. So, uh, it'll be really fresh, man. That's all I got to say. As fresh as my bear meat. And as fresh as my wounds. I don't really want to go too crazy as far as adventuring around. Hey, they came back. Look at this. Wait, is that... Yeah, I think this is a whole cedar limb. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Alright, get to it, son. Break it down. Great, that means the other one should be back too. Over across the way. There's three of them here. So, I love the echo. Really neat. Starting to get a little bit f froggy out here. A little froggy. And someone mentioned they didn't hear the uh, bear crows. The crows that used to be unique to just the bear. And uh, I didn't either. They're, they're really like a squawky type of a call. And you could always tell when a bear was in the area because you'd hear a very distinct um, call from the crows that would be uh, following the bear around. And uh, that was not the case. So I don't know. Maybe they took it out. Maybe it's only available in, um, you know, easier uh, difficulty levels. I don't know. It's really hard to see in this crap, isn't it? Okay. Well, at least I can see my footprints. I do feel sorry for a couple of people in the class. They got some pretty difficult <laughs> items. Like I, I'm like, I never even had seen that before. And if I had, I I wouldn't be the one collecting. I can tell you that much. One of them got a partially uh, a, a part of a leg, a human leg, not like a bone, but like part of a leg with flesh and all that junk on it. Now, obviously, this is like simulated. It's like a dummy, but that was she was supposed to package it up properly. I'm like, I have no idea even where to begin that. You know who you call? 
I'll call the coroner, man. You can have the coroner investigator come out and they do it. Because that's what they do. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> and an interesting fact, I did not know this, but there were, we actually have a coroner investigator in the class. It wasn't her that got the leg either. But um, she said, if you get a leg that hasn't been frozen yet, don't freeze it. Because when they unfreeze it to do the examination, or like a body part, I should say, any type of body uh, tissue, don't freeze it because when they unfreeze it to do the examination at the coroner's office, it becomes like soup. It gets all soupy. So they said just refrigerate it at a, at a you know a very cool level. I was like, huh, that's interesting. She said, now obviously if you find it in January in the middle of a snowbank and it's already frozen, it doesn't matter. You might as well keep it frozen. But um, if uh, if you find it thawed, a thawed piece of meat, don't freeze it and then unfreeze it because then it becomes difficult for them to examine. There you go. <laughs> Something you, I bet you had no idea you were going to learn when you first started watching this video. And I had no idea I was going to walk into that class and learn that either. Oh, let's drop that wood downstairs. Ah, okay, it's so sidetracked with my little stories, man. Okay, so here we go. We got some wood already down here. That's good. Drop this off here. And um, I don't think we're going to craft, or we're not going to cook tonight. What we'll do is we'll recover, get our condition all the way up to 100% tonight, and then tomorrow morning we'll go ahead and uh, go outside and try to do it one piece of wood at a time and try to do the meat that way. And that way we're not having to worry about the uh, cabin fever still. So that's the plan, and we'll see how... Okay, so we got on us, we have nine pieces of cedar wood and a tinder... I wish they'd stop giving me tinder plugs now that I don't need them. They serve absolutely no purpose. I'm just going to start dropping them in this corner here. Um, right here. That's fine. That's sort of out of the way. Okay, good. That's sort of out of the way. So, um, And do I have any food? I don't have any food on me. Let's go get a piece of meat to eat. I think I can eat, right? Yes. Oh, I got improved rest already. Still for some herbal tea, apparently. The sun is setting gonna get a lot colder soon. It's very pretty though. I will say that much. That is beautiful. Man, I love this. I love this game. He did so good with this game. Atmosphere, man. The general atmosphere, the music. David Chan. Raf Van Lee Rope. Alan Lawrence. All did excellent. The Founding members. And then a couple other people, but those were the primary ones of Hinterland when they first started. Since then, Hinterland has grown quite a bit, from my understanding. I'm really interested to see what they end up bringing after uh, after the long dark. And sorry, my, my dog's drinking. If you can hear something making some noise, it's not your roof leaking or anything like that. It's my dog. All right, so let's get some rest here after I get a drink. Yep, that should be enough to make it through the night. Why am I in here? I did. So flighty. I'm so flighty. So apparently, this is day shift accurize is very, very excitable and incredibly flighty with his uh, thought process. Okay. Well, let's try to stay. Let's try to stay in the in the shelter as long as we can tonight. Okay. I think we're okay for a little while. Jump in here. Eighty-nine percent. What's it going to take? It's going to take two sticks now. Two sticks. Alright. So let's go ahead and use it. Still not requiring any cloth to repair. 74 degrees. Um, I'm just going to eat. Already did. Never mind. Already drank. And getting a little tired. Hmm. Yeah, it's about time. Let's go ahead and just get to, get to get our rest on here. So, let's do uh, bedroll. Try two hours here. See how that goes. Again, it, this is not the most efficient way to like regain the condition, but I do want to sleep outside. It's better to get a huge chunk of rest. You recover better that way, rather than a bunch of small. Ooh, I don't know what this means for me. If this is a good idea to be out here or not. I guess we'll find out when we wake up with a wolf on our throat. So, all right, let's try another two hours here. Are we still getting improved rest? Yes, we are.
Now that does help with the condition, the, the T. It's not just increasing the stamina faster, it does increase your condition faster. Oh man, that's so beautiful. <sighs> Wish I was inside listening to some classical music, but I'm outside playing Boy Scout right now. Do another two hours. Still doing good. Feels like a nice, comfortable 70, 71 degrees. Everything I have on. We've survived 49 days, 15 hours, and 5 minutes. 6 minutes! Wow, we're almost one-seventh of the way there, right? We're getting close. Getting close. Alright, so let's do another 2 hours. Ooh, is it going to be like an Aurora slash Blizzard? Are the lights still on? No, the lights have gone off. And what's the temp in here? Now it feels like 55. It's starting to drop. That's why I'm going to just do two hours at a time. We don't freeze to death. And this might be the last two hours. We might wake up here in an hour, actually. Uh, I think we're going to wake up fully rested. Yeah, that, that's what I figured. I figured we're at 83%. That's all right. We can uh, let's get a little bit more water here. And I'll just hang out here, pass a little time. Until daylight. And then if it gets blizzardy, at least we've uh, spent the night out here. So if we have to stay inside the house, we can do that. If we have to. Or in here, even. But let's just pass an hour. Alright. Probably want to pass one more hour before I try sleeping again. I could eat anything. Yep, starting to get hungry again. And this should drop off pretty soon. By, by tonight, I'm sure that'll be gone. At least I hope so. Let's go ahead and uh, sleep for one hour. Yeah, one hour. Condition should go up a little bit. And we should be almost out of calories at this point. Alright, that, that looks like friendly snow. It's still pretty cold out here. This isn't the worst. That's not the worst. And we're up to 86%. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I will go ahead and get something to eat and drink, and I will slowly increase my condition even as I walk around. 22 degrees. Ooh, it's pretty cold out here even for, even for the way I am dressed. So... Alright, I'm going to go ahead and eat this real quick. There we go, back up to 4%, that's fine. That's fine. We need to get our condition up, that's that's more important than the slightly elevated risk for parasites. Um, 15 degrees, I think we're going to hang out inside the shelter until it warms up, until it gets... It's still morning, so... Yeah, we're going to hang out here. The pair is going to take two sticks still. I'm not quite ready to repair. I'll probably repair it when it's around 70%. Hang out here until... Uh, can, I do a, can I do an hour? No. Okay. Starting to get maybe a little warmer? It's hard to say. Oh, oh it's starting to see the wind kick. Wind sh kick it up. I have a feeling there might be a storm moving in. Kind of looks like it. We might be we might be not be searching for any more wood tonight, but you know that's okay. If we get caught in a blizzard, we can always do our. Uh, we got plenty of wood. We can start cooking our bear meat if we have to. So, see, I don't really want to be standing next to fire with a bunch of bear meat on me. So I'm gonna have to drop each individual piece and pick it up individually off the ground as I cook it by the fire. But if it's gonna start getting real super windy out here, I'm not gonna bother with it. I'll go inside and cook it if I have to. But I'm um, trying to give the weather the benefit of the doubt to pass through the area. If possible, that would be ideal. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, sort of calm down. 61. Looks like it's getting a little bit warmer. 34. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go see if we can get maybe a little more wood uh, across the street. And... How we doing here? 
up to 88% health. I think we were at 86 last time I checked specifically for that. Now the wood should be dropped across the street too. And I think we're down to probably about 56 pounds again, aren't we? 54.23. Okay, even better. Mostly. Probably most of that weight is clothing and ammo. Which is not a bad problem to have. Starting to get into a little bit of a routine here. I mean, apart from the bear attack. Starting to settle in here and, and feel like this is a, a little bit more like uh, more like home to me. I think I think the plan is we're gonna stay here until I get to cooking level five and. I use up all the meat and then we're going to move on from here and we'll still have plenty of time to uh, hit the other areas and sort of continue on that way. <clears throat> but with cooking level five, we'll be able to um, take down a, take down any threats and, and large animals and still be able to eat and not have to worry about that. So ideally, if I can connect with my shots on bears a little bit better, um, It'll be the most economical way to use my ammo, other than a moose, and I don't know how in the world I'm going to start bringing down moose. So I'm, I'm not really relying on them or putting them into the equation. Wow, look at all this wood over here. I'm not putting them into the equation yet, because uh, I've never... They're, they're such an unknown. They're, they're the X factor for me. So bears, I uh, have some experience with at least. So I can sort of depend on them for meat. Uh, if I don't screw things up, kind of like I did last time, I completely screwed that up, that whole, uh, encounter. Got happy fingers. Hit the wrong keys, as you saw. And, uh, I paid the price for it. How are we doing out here? 44 degrees? Alright, good stuff, good stuff. How are we doing on weight? 61 pounds, not bad, really, not bad. I think just over this hill is actually the uh, the fishing hut. I'm going to double check. I don't really want to go adventuring too far and end up in a foot chase or anything with a with a wolf at the moment. But or I see that I'm thirsty. I see. Not much not much left to drink, but a little something something. Oh, that'll take the edge off. Just enough till we get back home. Might as well get all the wood at once so that when it comes back again, we know that it's all back again. Okay, let's drop some of these tinder plugs. Guess I only had two of them there. This pack is getting kind of heavy. I think it's right over here. Take a peek. Yeah, it's going to be here, isn't it? Maybe it's down this way a little. Okay, so it must be down. It must be down that way a little ways. Maybe we'll go down there and check that out on a really nice day when I feel like uh, doing a little walkabout. What's our pack at? I'm just curious. 74. That's not too excessive at all. We're okay. I am thirsty. I'll get some more water when we get home. 89. 89 percent. Now, thirst will cost you two condition per hour. And I can't take credit for knowing that information. It came from one of the uh, commenters. So, thank you to them for that info. days man wow well I've 
Man, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Especially considering I had to go, I had to go up to uh, Summit three times to finally get it right. Completely my fault. I can't tell you how many freaking sprained ankles and wrists I've had. A lot. Someone said that they thought that it happened whenever uh, um, it was more likely to happen if there was a wolf or a predator in the area nearby. Uh, in one of the comments, and uh, I mean, it kind of seems that way. I don't know how true that is. I don't. It's sort of antidotal, I think, but. Um, it definitely seems to be pretty true, but there are a lot of times that I do deal with predators and I don't have an issue, so, you know, I don't want to get into a, I want to be cognizant of, an, you know, having an affirmation bias. Okay, well, we made it back from a nice little, uh, wood gathering trip. Not bad. Not bad. Not gonna complain. Um, definitely can't st start a fire outside with the magnifying glass. But we, what we can do is uh, I can take a couple pieces of this, move it over there. Okay, real quick here before I get pinged. This is not quick, this is slow. There we go, let's take a look, see if I did get... I got wolves coming my direction. I would imagine it'd be these guys. Looks like they've backed off. Looks like they might have been coming this way. By the way, they're sort of lined up. Check over here, make sure we're okay over here. Looks good. Looks like they're minding their, their own business. I wanna drop some wood out here. I think I'll stay near the hut. Eh. I don't want to keep an eye on wolves. I think I think my biggest threat is from over here, if anything. Yeah, I think uh, I, that's my biggest threat. Plus, I think the fire barrel will also help keep them away. I'm not sure if that's true or not anymore. It used to be a long time ago that it did protect you a little bit, but I don't know. It's hard to say. All right, so let's just do one piece of wood at a time. I also have a piece of coal down there if it gets super cold. But I prefer to save that. Feels like 52 out here. So, we're gonna get this uh, wood started here. Or let's get this fire started, rather. My throat's getting a little dry, so I'm gonna pop open a busy drink myself. Alright. So during the class, got into a little interesting discussion about what to do with a cell phone, how to properly package that up, because the guy next to me um, took the battery out, wrapped the, the cell phone in tin foil, and uh, went about it that way, which uh, is fine. And then the instructor mentioned, well, our prosecutor, where I'm from, would uh, get upset if we uh, if we remove the battery, because they consider that the start of a search, so you need a warrant for it if you were to do that without a warrant. Well, they said what th what they want them to do if they get a phone is to go ahead and put it in airplane mode and uh, package it up. And, uh, you know, some cell phones don't have batteries. That's understandable. Uh, like my iPhone doesn't have a battery you can actually remove easily, you know. Uh, I'm sure it can be done, but not, you know, sitting at a desk in a, in a road room like normal, like other cell phones, I should say. So, I was like, man, are you kidding me? By going into the phone and turning it into airplane mode, that's like more invasive than uh, than removing the battery, in my opinion. One is you're actually, you know, getting into it. And two, uh, with a battery, you're, you're actually doing the opposite. You're shutting it down. Um, so, to me, the battery made more sense. Also, I would imagine if there was somebody who's really tech savvy, let's say it was dealing with some sort of... Uh, 
computer crimes type type person, um, they might, if they're like a hacker and they're into that, and I think you guys know what type of subject matter I'm talking about, is um, they might have their phone set up so that if it goes into airplane, like if you press the airplane mode button, that might actually be set up as a program. Like that might, that airplane mode button might not be an airplane mode button, it might be a kill, a kill switch for the phone to wipe the phone. To me, it's so much safer just to, it like, from a logical standpoint, it makes more sense to just turn the phone off with by just removing the battery completely. Because once the battery's removed, it's not going to wipe anymore. It's done. The, the phone cannot function. So it's not doing anything. Um, and, and that's why, you know, with desktop computers, if you're going doing a search warrant on that type of subject matter, and you find a desktop computer you want to use for evidence, you don't you don't do shutdown on the computer because that might trip a uh, a program to wipe the computer. Um, you you unplug it from the wall. And uh, I was saying to me, removing the battery is about as close to an equivalent of that as you can get with like a desktop unplugging it. And um, anyway, he goes, yeah. So it, I looked up a court case, uh, Riley versus California, 2014, and it talks. It was a U.S. Supreme Court case and. Uh, Sp speaks uh, directly to that, and uh, I learned something new in there myself, and that was um, what are we doing with parasites? Still four percent. We're gonna we're gonna starve it a little bit tonight. Yeah, we'll just starve a little tonight. No big deal. Um, or maybe I could just eat something out of the. I'll probably just eat something out of the refrigerator for the heck of it. Um, it Roberts actually wrote a decision on that court case, and he uh, he he said that uh, let me go get some more meat to cook. He said that uh, it was okay for uh, officers without a warrant to uh, remove the battery uh, or put it into airplane mode. That was also fine. Or, um, let me drop all this. Or turn it off, if need be, you know. So they were saying, the Supreme Court was basically saying, those are fine as long as you're what you're trying to do is preserve the evidence, not look for more evidence. Which made sense to me. So... Him taking the battery out was fine. So the instructor was a little bit wrong about that. Another interesting thing that I found out in the court case was if you get, if you take a phone from somebody, a suspect who you're placing under arrest, you're seizing it as evidence. If that phone has not entered the lock state yet, like the, uh, you know how it goes to a lock screen if, if uh, after a certain amount of time or whatever, um, if it's not in a lock state, the officer is allowed without a warrant to uh, go into the phone and find the uh, find the setting to set it so that it doesn't lock to keep it in an unlocked state so turn off the lock setting and uh, I was like oh that's pretty interesting because that's pretty freaking invasive if you think about it um, I might not be, might not be familiar with uh, that phone and I might have to click on several buttons and go rooting through the phone a little bit just to find the unlock setting um, so I thought that was interesting but uh, anyway he wanted me to uh, get a copy of that court case like print it out and bring it into class tomorrow so I'll be doing that tomorrow I said yeah you might want to talk to your prosecutor and, and ask him about this specific court case because it sounds like this actually says that you're covered if you do uh, pull the battery out I just man I don't like I don't like having a going in there and pressing buttons any more than I have to um, to, to disable the phone while, while you wait for it to, uh, get sent off to the lab to get ripped and, uh, all the information copied from it. Um, to me, that's how you accidentally, or, or, or they set it up so that knowing police procedure, that's how they, that airplane mode thing. I, if I was a bad guy, I'd have that thing set up to, uh, to wipe. If anybody tried to put my phone into airplane mode, it would bypass the airplane mode and it would go into a wipe state. So I'd probably, I'm sure you'd be able to figure out a way to do an app, have an app for that. Heck, you could even have it an app where it spoofed the button, you know, where it wasn't really the actual airplane button. It just kind of looked like it. So, I mean, just gotta be extra, extra careful with that sort of thing. All right. Go grab some more here. How are we doing here? 54 degrees. We're looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. In here, still 4%. Probably 
drop all this meat real quick. Quick peek here, make sure we're not being... Uh, you guys were thinking about it again, weren't you? Oh, shoot. He's really thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> man, he made me jump. I thought I saw something in between the tree, like the little stands that were holding the trees up. Yeah, he was closing. <laughs> oh, man, you can keep that fire. I don't need it. Oh, man. Um, and I really don't want to... Uh, gosh, I wonder if I rest for... Like, if I rest and interrupt it, if it'll give him time to get away and I still get to keep my fire going. Let's see. Try to do this real quick. Okay, so I interrupted. Hopefully he's gone. Let's see. Fire's still burning. I think I heard him. Did I hear him? Oh no, I'm standing by the door in case I did. Well, we're healed. We can eat. We can eat meat again. If you guys can hear me. <laughs> I think we're okay. Yeah, I think we're okay to cook again. I'm just going to eat this one. About ready to pack up my fire and go in. Looks like this is protecting it, though. It, it, that's an hour and 46 minutes, and I, I don't think it's... Yeah, it doesn't look like the wind's really bothering it, so I guess the uh, the barrel does work as intended. I wonder how warm it is in here. Let's take a look. I wonder if the fire helps nearby. Oh my gosh, look at that. You can keep the fire going. Look at that, during a blizzard, 91 degrees. Not bad. All right. Just have to worry about getting eat by, eaten by a big old uh, wolf. And he made me jump. I had to run, run like a scaredy cat. And it's hard to hear now, that's the, that's the other problem. Uh, typically they don't come out in this weather, but I have seen them do it before, so it's not a guarantee. alone yeah it's doing good that barrel is really protecting it now I wonder if my clothes are taking a beating that's the other problem I bet you they are yeah yeah they are I, I shouldn't be out here I need to get back in let's do that I forgot about that dang it oh well we spent a lot of time outside I'm gonna go ahead and start the fire inside I'm gonna take a torch from here and uh, take it inside. Oh, it got blown out immediately. Oh, immediately. <laughs> so much for that idea. Uh, so I guess we'll put it away then. Man. All right, let me grab the, the wood then. Too much stuff to carry. Alright, let's head on in. Well, I guess we'll be doing the cooking inside. It's not worth uh, the condition hit to all the clothes. Man, it, it was really, uh... Really pretty nasty out there. Alright. And the park held up pretty good. Actually, I think everything did somewhat decent. Snow pants, I think those got... Does get hammered pretty good. Yeah. 
off. Alright, well, let me see here. Let me take a look at the, uh... It was a great idea till the, till the blizzard moved in. There we go, we're at level 4 here, and we're creeping up to 5. We're getting close, man. And we still got a lot more, more uh, meat to do, so... Let's, um... Hey, let's go ahead and get started here. Let me get another little drink. I, I'm... Oh, no, I have some on me. Okay. Here we go. Let me just go grab all this meat off of the... I can't even see which ones are the red ones. That was cool. Okay, okay. They looked almost like they were cooked. Get inside. I can guarantee you if there's wolves in the area, they are closing in on me right now. That's it's so feels like a lot of gear. It's such a tease cause I, cause I can hear the fire crackling out there. Makes me just want to go dump all the meat right on the fire. Moving so slow. <laughs> Alright. Oh, maybe. Nice and sleepy. Okay, let's get started here. I hate to I hate to have to do it again. I already had six cedar woods with me. Okay. That's right, I picked up all the wood from outside. I never actually dropped it there. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that burn barrel did a great job. Really good job. I wonder if my snow shelter is going to really take a hit after this blizzard. You'd think it would, right? All right. All right. There we go. Let's see how much of this meat we can get cooked in this amount of time. Probably a little, little paranoid about the whole uh, cabin fever at this point. Really shouldn't be with a snow shelter out there. I can take getting cabin fever every other day if I have to. Honestly, I could I could go stay in it in that blizzard and I'd be all right. And what would be nice is if I could throw the meat on the fire, dive back into the snow shelter, wait for it to cook, and then come creep out. Through it switch it out with another piece of meat and dive back in there and wait again, you know, and protect my clothes at the same time, and that's that's what I would do if I, if I really wanted to stay outside like that in real life, but uh, your movement gets frozen whenever you start cooking, you can't move, so. I think I want to get a really good night's sleep, even if that means sleeping half the day tomorrow. Cause I, I, I want to get this condition back up to 100% before the end of this uh, episode, if at all possible. That blizzard's a pretty decent size. Side sitting by the campfire. Yeah, I pretty much spent the whole night cooking meat right there. Cooking bear. Okay, so we got two more to go. And we'll see where we're at with our cooking skill. Hopefully, very close. 
Everything's getting so low. Look at this down here. <laughs> triple threat. Right on the verge of the triple threat. Okay, so we're good there. We're all done finally. Take a look. Can I even move? I can. I can. All right, let's take a look and see where we're at with uh, our skills here. Cooking. Uh, not as high as I'd hoped. I hoped it was going to be, like, up in here. I uh, am yeah, just getting a little too uh, too uh, greedy. That's okay. That's okay. If we have to bring down another bear, so be it. We will. My rifle uh, still loves loves it. Or I could go out and practice a little bow hunting with the uh, the deer out here, too. So let's go ahead and drop all this real quick. I just started running there for... Oh, I had the wind at my back. That's why I started running. Okay, big pile of bear meat. There we go. Let's uh, get ourselves uh, healed up a little bit here. We're at 87% condition. We don't need tea for that. We just need a little bit of water for the night. And um, I don't know, what else can we drink here? And we got some MREs and yada yadas. Probably eat some dog food. What do you think? Let's do some dog food tonight for old times. Got to know where you came from, right? Got to keep my uh, ego in check. There we go, 66 pounds. Why am I so heavy? What am I carrying around that's so freaking unbelievably heavy? I don't know, six pounds of that, but what else is there? Oh, five pieces of wood. I forgot about that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's throw that down. Flighty, my my brain is flighty right now. All right, there we go. Okay, great. Not really flighty. It's just sort of like uh, I don't know. Just done for the day. It's like, uh, not that any of the material that we we're covering in that class is taught is hard or complex or hard to understand. It's just. Staying conscious is like a con it's like a constant effort, you know. It's like I oh, just, just go to sleep right Maybe now. Or, soon. Hey, just watch some. Could I just watch some like Bosch or something like that? Or, oh, Bosch! Uh, fourth season of Bosch is coming out in April. So make sure you guys check it out. Great series, great cop series. And I tell you what, the way the officers, especially that desk, the the uniform uh, desk sergeant acts in that uh, show and Barrel and Crate, that's pretty much on point with my old department. They're they, it, they do a really good job capturing uh, uh, sort of the way the precinct, sort of the feel of a precinct, the humor and things like that. Okay. We don't want to do that yet. <laughs> we'll die. <laughs> All right, let's eat our dog food. I don't know why I have the can opener. I don't need that anymore. I can just smash it open now. I don't lose any more calories, so I can get rid of that can opener. Let's go ahead and do that now before I forget about it. So drop that can opener. Where's that? Here. Do I still have it or no? Oh, I guess I'm just using my hands. Like just, <laughs> this is where the can opener should be because look, it's an open can. No, I'm just kidding, I know it shouldn't be there. I know, I know. Okay, so I guess that was me not using the can opener. Okay, good. All right, it just sounded like I was using it. All right, and let's get a drink. There we go, wonderful. Let's get, uh, we're really tired. Let's get a solid, uh, Let's do uh, eight hours. We'll be uh, we'll be 100% by eight hours. Let's do that. Hopefully the blizzard passes by then. And there it goes. There it goes. All right, nice sunshiny day. 100% condition. Feels like 85 degrees in here. I need check, to find food. Check my uh, clothing here real quick. Yeah, I want to need to hunt another rabbit. I want to have to go out there and and uh, hit that rabbit that bounces around out there with the stone, kill it, and get that pelt going. I need to get it uh, cured, you know. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to take those uh, gloves off, and I just tore off, tore up my last uh, good pair of gloves. So I gotta, I gotta stay on top of it when it comes to the fixing those rabbit gloves. Um, all right, so there we go. Take a look outside, see what it looks like. It's cold. I don't think it is, but it kind of looks like it is early morning. Oh, well, no, it's not. It's midday. I slept in today. I forgot. 42. It's not bad. 
Not bad. All right. Well, guys, I think we'll uh, go ahead and end this episode here. I'm going to leave these pieces of meat out here. No need to pick them up, really, honestly. Let's see what we need to repair the snow shelter. Look, we need uh, what, three, three and a cloth. Ah. So if you let it get to a certain level, you're going to need a cloth at that point. Is that how it works? Let me know in the comments. So I need to keep it, what, above 75% probably, something like that, so that I can only use... If I keep it, like, high, like 80 or higher, can I just keep using sticks and I never have to use cloth? Is that the way it works? So, all right, let's go get some sticks here real quick. I know where I can find some. Before I sign off, I started to do my sign off, but I'm going to go grab some sticks here real quick. I know I got a bunch of them uh, in there, I think, or, yeah, I think, I, no. Yeah, in there. Actually, there are a whole bunch in there. I'm just going to use those. There's a lot. Yeah, let's just use these. I need two sticks and a cloth. Let's go and tear up some curtains. Come out here and get this thing mended up before it falls apart on me. Another beautiful day in Pleasant Valley. Life in the PV. Alright. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this drape right here. Never liked that curtain. There we go. All right. There's so much stuff we can tear up for cloth in here. Unbelievable. And hack up for cloth. All right, let's let's heal this thing up here. Repair it. Nine minutes. Doesn't. It's guaranteed. It doesn't look like there's like 85% chance of success or anything like that. Look, once you do it, you do it. Okay, it looks pretty much the same to me. Take a look inside, 100%er. -er. All right, looks like it's working good to me. All right, guys, so we'll go ahead and end this episode here. Like, comment, subscribe. If you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell so that you get alerted whenever I post new videos. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Episode, what will it be next time? 2021? I don't know. But uh, we're going to be past day 50. So you got to love that, right? Yeah, we're on 52, it looks like now. So... I'll see you guys, and we'll start day 50, 52, and, and uh, keep going. Keep pushing to uh, 365. We'll get there eventually, and uh, we got a big chunk of them done. So, uh, yeah, we're well on our way. Y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one.